Hi everyone, what's up? It's Joshua here from Alternative Brewing. And today we're going to be discussing taking care of a beloved and cherished member of your household, your home espresso machine. When we begin, I'm going to be viewing this from the perspective of just taking your espresso machine home for the very first time. And there is an importance that you take care of your machine from the moment you purchase it. Now what often happens in this scenario is similar to buying a brand new car. It's quite an expensive purchase and there's no real obligation from the retailer to be teaching you how to drive the machine. And along with the already complex decision of which one you should buy, what's easily overlooked is the details with preventative care and ongoing maintenance. You know how it works, or more so, you know what it should do, but perhaps getting the best performance and taking full care of it hasn't been part of this initial stage. Now, there are some simple, regular preventative maintenance steps that perhaps you're already doing, and if performed consistently, then this will lessen the likelihood of the machine failing with an unexpected breakdown. So let's get started. But first, maintaining a popular YouTube channel does take a lot of maintenance on its own. And that's why I'm gonna ask you to smash that like button as it does help with the YouTube algorithm and we'd really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get back to the video. Now, there is one element to all of this that can absolutely ruin a brand new espresso machine in months if not weeks. And I'm talking about the water you put into that water tank. All espresso machines run on water and it's the main ingredient to espresso, but all water is not equal. And that's a rabbit hole we won't get into today, but we can talk about the fact that tap water in most cases is naturally higher in minerals that under the conditions as they are inside an espresso machine do cause high levels of scale buildup to take place inside the boiler and then through those thin pipes of the machine, working to cause heating inefficiencies and worse, full gone blockages of the pipes. So just like when you're at the pump and you're thinking about putting standard unleaded petrol in your car and not 95% premium in the tank, just think for a second how this could affect you further down the line. Now the cost effective options you do have with an espresso machine are buying a filter and tap combo that's installed off of your kitchen sink. And this will produce suitable filtered water to protect your machine and is usually rated to well above 500 liters. And I'll place a link down below for one I recommend. Also in this category are water jugs that can filter tap water sufficiently to remove a good amount of those minerals from it. And I would use one solely for the purpose of the machine alone though as having it for drinking water too will speed up the use of that filter and you'll find you'll be replacing those filters all too often. A second option is buying a large quantity of filtered water from the supermarket which seems a little bit much but it can be a more consistent supply of the same water than any other choice I'd recommend but it can easily get expensive and is not very sustainable. Now, there are also specific smaller filters that can either be placed straight into your machine's water tank or attached to the inline pipe from the water tank into the machine, like the Brita Aqua Gusto or a simple resin filter. Links up and below for these. And either of these two will act to reduce the amount of minerals in that tap water that specifically cause scale building up further down the line. So these two types of filters do offer that option to continue filling up that water tank with tap water and then not worrying about it too much after that. But these filters are usually rated to under 250 liters and will eventually run out of effectiveness. And they will need to be replaced sooner than those larger exterior filters do. So weighing up that initial cost of installing a larger tap filter versus the smaller more regular tank filters is something that should be done on a case of your own personal budget and that space that's available to you. Knowing full well you've just spent a good amount of cash on the espresso machine it is hard to reconcile going for the best filter on the market but you should know that anything in the way of putting better quality water than just plain tap water in your machine will increase not marginally but considerably the longevity and performance of that espresso machine. 
Now one more thing on water tanks though. If you can remove it, do so, but at least wipe it out perhaps once a month to remove any chance of that algae from building up in the tank. And that presents itself as a slimy film on the inside of the tank and it can wreak havoc with the flavor of your coffee. Next, let's talk about the daily cleaning during and after use. Simple and effective methods of eliminating the buildup of old coffee oils or grounds that are left within the machine's working parts. And then removing that milk scum off the steam wand can play a huge role in maintaining the quality flavor of the coffees you've come to enjoy on the machine. And there's no real seasoning of a new coffee machine. It really should be as clean as brand new every time you go to use it. So between each espresso shot you make, you should be flushing that group head with some water coming out of the boiler. And this will remove ground stuck up on that filter screen from your last shot. And this then ensures that you're not overbrewing with old already used grounds in the next shot. And it also reduces the cleaning and scrubbing you need to do at the end of the day. Next, wiping out your filter basket between shots and also clearing off the top edge of that filter basket before you go to use it, as grounds found here will be pushed up against the rubber seal in the group head and then begin to wear that down sooner than normal. And then further wiping of the steam wand should be done every time you steam milk, as the hot metal of the steam wand has a nasty habit of getting milk to cake up on the outside, creating a milk scum that hardens over time and is very hard to remove. If you wipe down that wand every time you use it with a damp cloth, you eliminate this buildup altogether. Now after your last shots have been made for the day, you will want to back flush that group head to remove any grounds that are either stuck in limbo behind the shower screen, around the inside of that rubber seal, or from within the back flush pipe that runs down behind the group head and into the back of the drip tray. So, back flushing involves using a rubber seal or a blind metal filter basket to block the normal flow of water out of the spouts of your porta filter. And then when you lock that porta filter in place and turn on that brew switch, it builds up pressure inside the group head with nowhere to go. Upon releasing that switch by turning your brew button back off, that pressure is forced out through a valve at the back of your group head and then through a line down into your drip tray below. And you'll wanna do this at least five or six times to get a good volume of water for a thorough clean of the back flushing system. Back flushing can be done with just water on a busy day, but with a tiny bit of chemical like Cafetto's Evo Machine Cleaner, link up above, you'll really be doing your espresso machine a huge favor, clearing out any potential blockages and removing most of those unwanted oils, as well as loosening up some of those grinds. And I would absolutely schedule in a chemical clean each week if you're not prepared to be doing it every day. And that's the basic daily cleaning routine for the home espresso machine. And these next few steps, I would recommend doing on a weekly or fortnightly basis, depending on the volumes of the coffees that you're making. But for a little bit of perspective here, pretty much everything I've mentioned earlier and what I'm also about to suggest is absolutely carried out on a day-to-day -day schedule in a cafe by baristas to ensure their number one piece of equipment never faults and is always at its peak performance. So something that is easily done on a day-to-day -day basis is using a plastic brush like this one, or an old toothbrush, or even something small enough to scrub the inside of that group head where the seal sits around the filter screen. And this also loosens up grind stuck in the filter for when you back flush the machine later on. Now you can also take a microfiber cloth to this area and this helps wipe away those oils easier too. Occasionally though, there will be some stubborn grinds that will not leave that filter screen. And this is where you will need to remove that screen. With most screens being removable one way or another, I would recommend giving the filter screen a scrub over weekly. And also you can soak this in a quarter teaspoon of Evo machine cleaner with hot water for five minutes or so, and this will absolutely assist in the full cleaning of it. And further soaking of the group handle and those filter baskets can be done as required at a maximum of two week intervals to ensure these stay squeaky clean and free of oils turning into gunk. 
Another extra procedure to be carried out on the steam wand from time to time is to remove that steam tip. But don't worry if you can't, you're at least able to soak it in a hot cup of water and then this will loosen up any milk scum that's occurring on the wand as well. And removing this is done with a quick wipe down. And beyond giving the espresso machine a gentle wipe down around the sides, the back, the top and that front panel, it is also important to keep the drip tray as empty and as clean as possible, as this will either be where you begin to see rust form or general nasties such as fruit flies, ants and mold if that's not regularly cleaned out. And that pretty well sums up taking care of your home espresso machine. And I will add further links down below on chemicals and cleaning packages that can help you ensure that your precious espresso machine is taken care of so it lasts and then it takes care of you for many more mornings to come. So if you have any questions on the procedures or the chemicals I've mentioned in this video, throw them in the comment section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon on your screen and then that way you stay notified when we bring out new videos just like this every week. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.